Hi, I'm Laura from Clubland. Some of you may know us um, from after school clubs, summer holiday provisions, some of our sports activities that we do here at Lanelith Institute. Currently, we've been providing you with activity packs over the last 12 months. Because of the COVID pandemic, we've been unable to work with you in person. So we've come together today. Kerry is with us as well, who helps out with Clubland. She's filming. And we're going to talk you through something that we've been working on here at Clubland at the Institute, which is very special. And we'd like the help of your sixes involved. So we've been working on something called a time capsule here at Clubland, which we'd want your help with today during the lesson. So have a little think, first of all, what do you think a time capsule is? And what do you think we've been working on a time capsule about over the last 12 months? So pause the video, and then we're going to come back and Kerry will talk you through what is a time capsule. Okay. Hi, everybody. We've, we've swapped places now. Laura's actually filming. I'm going to explain to you what a time capsule is. A time capsule is a container storing a selection of objects cho chosen as being typical of the present time. It's put away for a date in the future to be opened at a specific time. So down at Clublan, we thought it would be a very, very important thing to do for our villages if we could record a living part of history by creating a time capsule that is going to be put away in the Institute by the Heritage Society uh, with lots and lots of different things that have gone on during the pandemic. Lots of things that may have um, happened in and around the world. So we're creating a diary as such or a log that will be put away until probably 20 years time. So 2041. So I'll just give you some ideas. We've started creating the diary, the time capsule of life during COVID. And our Clubland logo is there. The logo for the Institute is there. And we're in, including children from St. Ilsted, Wysex, and children from Sovereign, Wysex. Um, so we are hoping to have a reflection of both villages and the life at the time there. We started off in our book about the time when the floods happened because Lanilleth and the streets in Lanilleth were badly affected. That was in the February of 2020. Uh, we've got some stories from local people telling us how they were affected. Um, and then just after the February when the floods happened, we were told that there was a virus that seemed to be coming from China that no one knew about. It was something new to the world. Um, I won't tell you too much about the details that we found. Maybe you can go off and research where the source started from and find a little bit out about that. Then in the newspapers, we saw that a, sh a cruise ship was affected with lots of people having to be quarantined on board the ship because of the infection that was spreading wildly there. They couldn't come off there for, for several days or weeks with it. Uh, this is a copy of a letter that was sent out to everyone from the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson. You may have had one in your family. Somebody in your family may have had one telling us the position for um, everyone in the country and how we were all going to have to isolate for quite some time at the beginning until more was found out about it. Um, there's a little bit there stay in the story of Wales, 100 days of lockdown. Um, and there's a caption there which says, a series of measures described as unprecedented in peacetime. So that may be something that you can look up about. Now we've got some pictures to jog some ideas for you for when you are putting your interviews or written pieces together. Uh, the pandemic had a profound effect on the retail sector. Shops had to close and everyone seemed to have to go online to do their business for shopping, working, all aspects. So there's a little bit about it there. The shops and supermarkets such as Tesco's and Asda's were completely empty. The shelves had been bought out, people panic bought. One panic buy that seems to bring a smile to everybody now is the fact that 
there was a huge panic to buy toilet rolls. So as you can see in the picture there, people were loading trolleys full of toilet rolls. Non-essential shops in Wales and many other businesses had to close during the lockdown. Lockdown. So the arcades in Cardiff are completely empty and the shops are all shut. Hand sanitizer became sold out because of the need to keep your hands sanitized at all times. The government had to set up emergency hospitals called Nightingale Hospitals to prepare for the event of main hospitals becoming unable to cope with the level of pandemic. There's one set up there, that picture shows you an emergency one that was set up in the stadium in Cardiff. The bottom one shows that there was a rush on to open the new hospital, the Grange, in Cumbran. These are some of the posters that became frequent everywhere. Hands, face, space, and we all had to get used to remembering that wherever we were, whoever we were with, it was an important logo. What can people in Wales do over the Christmas period? Now, we've put a list there of things that Mark Drakeford, who was the First Minister for Wales, said that we could or couldn't do, but maybe that's something that you can find out about. It was a very, very different Christmas to those we've known previously. Uh, there's some of the rules throughout lockdown. And then we've included in ours some pictures um, that the Christmas lights down and around Lanhilla still went on. It's very festive there. Cities around the world were in lockdown. So we've included some pictures. We've shown Sydney, Cardiff, Moscow, London, Rome, Paris. And in each of the pictures, you can't see anyone walking about at all. It's something that the world had never known of before. Wales acted separately to England, Scotland and Ireland and there were signs up saying Wales is closed. So if you had relatives who lived over the border in any of the other countries, they couldn't come across to Wales for quite some time. And we were actually in lockdown locally and couldn't go out of our own area. So if you lived in Blaina Gwent, you had to stay in Blaina Gwent. As the virus became more prevalent, everyone was asked to seek a test. If they experienced symptoms such as a persistent cough, temperature, a lack of taste or smell. And we actually had a pop-up, they called it, um, centre to drive into down at the park entrance in Lanhilleth. There's some pictures there of people going, having the swabs taken for the tests. Uh, now I wonder if this will jog your minds. At the time, everyone was very, very grateful to the National Health Service for how hard they were working to deal with people who were ill, being admitted to hospital. Uh, the people who were trying to develop a vaccine to fight against it. So a way of thanking them was that on a Thursday night, people all over the country came out on their doorsteps to clap in support of the NHS. And we've got a photograph there. The top photograph, and this one here, shows the rainbow because that became a symbol of hope that one day we would see an end to the pandemic. And one of our activities that we're going to ask you to do, um, I'll just show you a little picture there, but when we come to speak to, to you about the next part of um, the project that we're asking you to be involved with, we will be decorating pebbles using the, the rainbow symbol um, that we'd be asking you to do in school, but to take home as a, a, a gift to keep. During the pandemic, care homes with elderly people were hit heavily with mortality rates. Lots and lots of people died because the, at that time, the vaccine hadn't been developed enough. Um, and it was a very, very sad situation when relatives weren't able to go and see their elderly relatives who were in care homes. So you can see in the photograph there, there's a family outside waving through the window to maybe their grandmother or their mum or you may know of someone yourself that had that was in that position. Now this was a very, um, he became a very famous person throughout the pandemic. 
Sir Tom Moore. He was Captain Sir Tom Moore and he actually started walking um, to show his support of the NHS and he fundraised into, let me have a look, 33 million pounds collected and the Queen honoured him by knighting him. So there's some pictures there about Sir Tom Moore. You may remember the story about that and be able to find a little bit more about it. Churches, mosques and all places of worship had to close. Down in Lanhilleth, our uh, service of remembrance still went on, but with a very limited number of people. So you can see there that um, our minister, Reverend Viv Nichols and Pam Hopkins, um, a few of the local um, dignitaries turned up at the Institute and still celebrated and honoured um, the War Memorial at that time, but with the COVID rules in place. Uh, there's some more pictures of people who came down to um, the celebration there and on the back. A gentleman there is a local resident in Lanhilleth who was actually an Air Force pilot in World War II, Mr. Charles Sargent. Um, and he still comes to the Institute every week. So we see Mr. Sargent quite regularly. Uh, that's just one of the support line things that was going on in the Institute. Um, a food bank was set up called Fair Share, which is still carrying on at the moment, down up in the top hall of the Institute. Uh, following the death in America of George Floyd by a policeman kneeling on his neck, protests erupted all over the world with mass gatherings breaking COVID restrictions. Um, so you may know a little bit about what went on there, where footballers took to, to kneel in and take in the knee. Um, but that was a matter of um, news that happened during the pandemic. Now something a little bit more lighthearted. One of our local lads down in Lanhilleth wrote a poem and we thought it was so good. We've taken a copy and put in our diary so that it will go in the time capsule. You might like to do something like that and make a poem that you could send in for us with your name on and your age and we could put it in the, the capsule as well. Schools and colleges closed to pupils of all ages and online uh, uh, sorry, an online learning became the norm. So for the first time ever, you didn't go into school every day to have your lessons. You logged on and your teacher met with you online and delivered lessons that way. Some of the world leaders contact, contracted COVID. Um, we've got some pictures there. You might like to do a little bit of research and find out some of the important people that we heard of who caught COVID. And this story here is about the footballer Marcus Rashford who fought a campaign to get free school meals provided to children throughout the pandemic. Another piece of news that happened out in America. As President Trump's term in office neared to an end, the unprecedented events of the people storming Congress emerged, shocking the whole world. Joe Biden became the next president of the USA. So there was a, a news element that happened during the pandemic. On March the 16th, 2020, Wales lost its first person to coronavirus. One year on, we remember nearly 5,500 loved ones who were no longer with us. One year and 5,000 deaths, the faces of the people in Wales killed by COVID. So if you go online, you would be able to do a little bit of research about that. Uh, a lot of famous buildings in and around Wales lit up as a, uh, as a tribute to those people. You can see the Grange Hospital, the stadium, um, quite a few different ones there. Another piece of news that happened, the Duke of Edinburgh died at almost 100 years old. Well, the Duke of Edinburgh was the Queen's husband for many years. So that was a sad part of news that came about during 
the pandemic closed down. I won't go on through too much more because we'd like it to be that you create some of your own ideas when you either do your interview speaking to another person or writing it down. Um, but we'd love to have any ideas that you come up with. The, the sheet that we intend to send out for you will give you some ideas to think on. But the, the book that we just showed you will just give you a little bit of an idea of the way that we've tried to um, come up with some memories that will go into the, cap, the capsule that will be important in 20 years time to look back at. Okay? So now Kerry's talked you through what we've done so far in the time capsule. We've got a few activities we'd like you to do so that you can contribute as year six to the time capsule. And I think it'll be lovely in 20 years time that your work that you're doing in class for our project will be shared in the local community and you may be involved in when we open the time capsule back up and you can look back on your work. So make sure when you're doing the, the three tasks that we set out today for you, that is to your best ability because in 20 years time, this is gonna be opened up again and you're going to be um, a lot older then. So looking back on your work in year six, you wanna be proud of it, okay? So the first task that we've got is called an interview okay and we've got a sheet prepared for you and on the sheet it's got questions all the way up to 20 questions all about how you felt and what you've done over the last year during the pandemic and what we'd like you to do is perhaps you do a little bit of research first about the pandemic thinking about what Kerry said's already happened in the and what's in the time capsule and then we want you to answer the question. So for example, one of the questions says, how did you feel during lockdown? What is something that has helped you cope through the pandemic? How do you feel right now as lockdown is being lifted? And there's 20 questions in all that you need to answer. So you might wanna do a little bit of research to think back of what's happened and think about what Kerry said. And we'd like you to, to fill out the questions and we can put a hard copy of your, um, finished piece of work in the time capsule. But what we'd really like is for you to record with a partner, each other asking the questions, film it whether it's on an iPad or something in class, and then we've provided you and your teacher with a pen drive. So it's just a USB that we can upload the videos to and put the pen drive along with your hard copies into the time capsule. So then in 20 years time, when we open up the time capsule, there'll be videos of you in year six describing what it was like and your written piece to go with your video so just think in 20 years time how lovely will it be to look back on yourself in year six and people in the local area who wasn't around maybe when the pandemic happened at children that are growing up now or children that are going to be born and think about how they'd like to see you interviewing each other and answering these questions so what you can do as a class is, um, how you do it is up to you, but you do a little bit of research, answer the questions written, and then record each other and upload it to the pen drive. And the written copy and the pen drive is what will go in the time capsule. So that's the first task that we'd like you to do to contribute. The second task, um, this is going to be a little bit of a leavers um class of 21 to go into the time capsule as you're leaving the primary school now we've got you and year six from Sovereign doing this so we thought as a class leavers of class of 2021 we've got for you a quilt that we'd like you to make as a class okay so the front cover there gives you a little bit of an idea of what it would look like at the end but yours is going to be different to this one so you each get a piece of fabric and at the end once you've completed the piece of fabric we are going to tie it all together. You can tie it all together as a class. And then the piece, when it's finished, will go in the time capsule, along with your interview and your USB. This will go into the time capsule. So on your piece of fabric, you get one sheet each. So you might want to go on it with pencil first, but then we've given you some fabric markers. Okay, and what we'd like you to do is just a simple self-portrait with your name, okay, underneath, and the date. So a self-portrait, your name and the date, and colour it in using our fabric markers. So at the end, what you get is a lovely quilt of the class of 21 from St. Ilted and the class from Sovred. You get your lovely quilt finished. Okay, and what we'd also like you to do if you get if you want to extend um, this any further is on the back, if you wanted to print out a picture of yourself, 
to put on the back of your drawn self-portrait. That would be lovely to add to it, but that's optional. So that in the time capsule in years to come, we can see the picture of you on the back and the drawing that you did. Okay, so we'd like it back like this, self-portrait of year six from St. Eltids and from Sovereign. Right, now we go on to our next activity that we are providing you with for our time capsule. And this is a fun one and something we would like you to create and have as a leaving present from Y6 in your school to take home, but also as a reminder of the time capsule and the pandemic that we've just been going through. So it's about pebble painting. We will have given your teachers some pebbles, some packs of special paints that are called acrylic paints that take well on stone, some really nice brushes to use and there will be some special markers to use to write on the back of your pebble. You may want to do that part first actually. On the reverse of the pebble, the part that you're going to put the pebble down on a flat surface with, you put your name, age and the date on the back then on the front you're going to make your own design that you're going to fill in and paint now Laura and I discussed it and thought a nice idea for designs may be to base it on the rainbow that we spoke about when we looked through the Covid capsule we put some sheets in with ideas there's all sorts of variations of how you could do the rainbow you may want to make it like a little ladybug um, you could do the rainbow with some writing on it once the paints have dried. Um, all sorts of different ideas. But first of all, I think it would be a good idea if you've got a piece of paper and a pencil and maybe some coloured pens to draw and colour in your design before you actually do it onto the pebble. When you've come up with the idea that you feel happy with, Take your time, don't rush it, and you need to wait for each stage to dry. So if you do the reverse first, put in your details on the back with the felt pen. Then when you come to do the painting, make sure that you take your time, do it steadily, and completely leave it to dry before you do any writing onto the, onto the coloured side. When it's completely finished and completely dry, there will be some varnish provided that you paint over carefully to make it waterproof in case you want to put it outside. Have fun and we look forward to seeing pictures at the end of it of what you've come up with. We hope you enjoy making all the activities that we've provided to go in the time capsule. We can't wait to see your interviews and your sheets and also we look forward to seeing your class of 21 quilt. Remember, you can take your pebbles home. That's a leaver's gift from us from Club Land for you to take home. But if you could take some photos of your pebbles to give us alongside your other work to go in the time capsule, that would be lovely. Um, if there's anything else as a class, like a class picture or any work or things that you've been doing over the last year that you'd like us to put in the time capsule as a class or as a school, that's up to you. And we look forward to seeing the end results. And we will share with you when we put the time capsule away and when the date is that it's going to be opened in 20 years time.